In the last lecture, we talked about language acquisition and the variables which can affect language learning. But today I'm going to talk about common features of good language learners. These features include being willing to take risks and learn from mistakes, effective revision, being well organised and independence from the teacher. I will also consider different cognitive learning styles by referring to research into something called multiple intelligences. All right, let's begin. Risk-taking is an important part of language learning. In other words, learning through trial and error. As learners try to apply the rules of the L2 to different communicative situations, they are able to judge their level of success and, if necessary, restructure or reword what they are saying if it is incorrect. This is an important part of the learning process. Effective revision of classroom study by reviewing and going over notes will help the learner to improve their knowledge of vocabulary and grammatical patterns. You can't learn a language just by studying in the classroom. An organised approach can also help to make the learning experience more effective. Keeping accurate records is important. For example, learning vocabulary can be made more effective if the learner organises his or her records into logical and related subject areas. This helps people to see how vocabulary from the same area is connected. You should try this. It can really help if you try to learn vocabulary by thinking of it in relation to other words. But perhaps the most important feature of most good language learners is their ability to work independently on an ongoing basis after classroom teaching has finished. This could include actively doing further learning activities without prompting. An understanding that progress comes through independent learning and maximising the time available will help to produce the best results. Nevertheless, some recent research into learning styles has shown that different people learn best in different situations. This theory has been called multiple intelligences. Different intelligence types have been organised into eight areas which identify the ways in which different people learn. People with high verbal linguistic intelligence are good at using words and language. On the other hand, logical learners have a strong ability to use reason and logic. Visual learners see the world in terms of pictures and images. Bodily learners are stimulated through movement and action, whereas musical intelligence refers to the ability to produce and appreciate music. Interpersonal intelligence is the ability to relate to and understand others, while intrapersonal intelligence is concerned with self-reflection. Those with natural intelligence interact well with nature and the environment. What types of intelligence describe you? You can find some interesting internet sites about this subject. Some linguists think that if we are able to identify the learning styles which best describe students' approach to study, then we can find ways to improve their language learning success. Teachers can even design activities which take the different learning styles into account. This could have a clear impact on language learning. By taking into account the different intelligence types, teachers can ensure that learning exercises suit the different types of people in the class. It is a way of helping people to learn in the way that suits them best. Of course, it would be impossible to design every lesson according to all of the different intelligence types. However, individual lessons in a course could be planned in order to reflect the different intelligence types. This could be an important way to help maintain motivation, which we have already identified as a key learner variable.